What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. And I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the first woman to ever set foot in the octagon, Liz Carmouche, as she prepares for her upcoming fight uh, in PFL. Liz, the first thing I want to ask you, and I uh, thank you very much for joining me today. PFL, I, I suppose, you know, you've been known, obviously, as a UFC fighter for, for years, been the Bellator champion, and have dominated Bellator uh, in, in your time there and now you're moving over to the PFL I suppose for uh, a, a new chapter to your career I suppose late in your career are you, are you looking forward to it are you a bit trepidatious w- did you want to do this Is it, has it been sprung upon you how are you feeling about it yeah, I'm excited. Uh, when I left the UFC, you know, I had different opportunities to, to fight for other organizations, and PFL was at the top of that list. Um, at the time, it just didn't really look like they had the 125 division, so the transition to PFL wouldn't have made sense. And we all know I'm not a 145er, so that was the only opportunity. Now that this is perfect, you know, I had I've had such a great run with Bellator, and to now have this opportunity to do it in PFL is really exciting. With the prospect of building up a new division. And going with all the great talent that they're starting to stack in this season's play, is uh, is this going to be uh, a kind of a half PFL, half Bellator career for you from here on out? Because we know with the Bellator Champion Series, it's coming to obviously my country here in Ireland uh, in the next while, and we'd love to see you fighting here. Is is that a thing you want to be about a Bellator and a PFL athlete going forward? Are you sticking to PFL right now? Well, I definitely think with the season play, I don't see room um, outside of those four fights within the season to be able to do that. But outside of that, absolutely, especially with the prospect of traveling the world, that is super exciting. That's one of the things that that I love about the opportunity for fighting is a chance to learn new cultures, languages, experience the food, see the world, and then get to, yeah, that's like, what else could it be, could be better than going to another country to fight? So I love that opportunity. Do you feel that that's a, a part of PFL as well? Because obviously, you know, the global season, a lot of it has been on in the United States, but, you know, the European series and obviously with the Bellator series as well, now going outside of it, it is that opportunity. Is, is that something you'd like to do at this stage of your career as well? Yeah, big time. You know, um, my last two fights in the UFC was in the Czech Republic and in Uruguay. And I loved it. I thought it was so cool just to get to see another part of the world. I, I love the challenge of learning a new language, even if I'm horrible at it, just trying just for the sake of like respect to the culture, learning the different customs. So an opportunity to be able to fight somewhere else and do it under the Bellator or PFL banner is, is would just be amazing. We'll, we'll have to teach you a bit of Irish so next time uh, we get you I'm on. Great. <laughs> Lovely, absolutely. What, what about this fight with uh, with Juliana Velasquez? Obviously, you fought twice before. When you heard she was the name you were going to be fighting in, in the PFL, what was the reaction? Yeah, I was a little bit bummed. I was hoping for somebody else. Um, I totally, honestly, I forgot that she was, it didn't even register on my radar that she was one of the possibilities it could be in the tournament. I was thinking it was going to be some of the other women that were involved in in Bellator and also that I've seen in different editions of PFL. Um, I, but at the same time, it, it is exciting because I know that she's going to be super hungry after the results of the last two fights. I think that that second one really threw her off her game and she wasn't anticipating how I was going to come out. So I know that she's going to come out trying to kill me in this third fight, which makes it a much more back and forth fight for the fans. And it makes them want to, to tune in knowing that she wants to draw blood and so do I. Like, it's funny looking back at those two fights. Look, arguably the first one, we know the way it finished. There was a bit of uh, a bit of uh, you know a chat about whether it should have been finished or not. There was none in the second. You know that was a, a very definitive way to to finish a fight. Like, is there's no like from your uh, of course from her side, there's loads of unfinished business. But from your side, there's very little unfinished business. Uh, business, obviously. Is it hard to get up for this fight? Is it hard to prepare for this fight, knowing that you've been there twice before and won twice before? No, not at all. You know, um, I, I think I kind of look at it as the possibility is it's if anything, it's more dangerous because in the first fight, everybody thought there was controversial. I didn't see it to me. If you just lay there and you're not moving and you're taking elbows, there's no doubt in my mind how the result should have gone And a minute more of that. And she probably would have had a broken face. Right. Then the second one, we don't have any doubts. I threw off her game. That to me says an opponent that's coming out willing to take any risk necessary to get a win, even if it means doing something illegal like eye gouging or anything of the sort. So I really have to be on my toes and I have to be mindful. And it makes me hungry to go out and to get a really strong finish that absolutely cements that coffin of any doubts anybody's ever had.
How good of a fighter do you think she is? Because I'll be honest, when she won the belt and she was undefeated, I thought she was going to go on and dominate for a long time. And obviously you came along and, and changed that very quickly. You know, she hasn't fought since. You fought twice since and, and obviously defended your title twice. Like, what do you think, first of all, of that, the fact that she hasn't fought since your fights? And the fact as well, and the, the, the first question about how good you actually think she is and what her level can rise to. Yeah, I, you know, she's she's still young. And in my mind, if if I can turn over a new leaf as my career moves on, if I can keep learning, I don't see why anybody else can't do the same thing. So I, I don't have any doubts that she has nothing but possibility of her future. And I don't know what was happening, whether it was her professional or personal life that held her back from being able to fight, whether it was a personal choice or not. So I, I don't know, you know, like in some cases, maybe you had lost you had demands that limited your ability to do that so i don't know how that plays a role in anything or if simply having lost was just really something she couldn't mentally prepare for and she was trying to get over that i don't know um i can hope right that uh, it was really that i was in her head and that she has doubts within herself going into it that just makes this fight that much sweeter for myself but i'm not going to bank on that I'm, I'm expecting somebody that just had to step back for personal reason and is ready with everything they have to come at me I, it was funny you mentioned about turning a new leaf over in your career because that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you because obviously, you know, there's been a big change in the last six or seven fights, winning all of them, uh, it was seven fights in a row now, and I was looking at your record, and between 2013 and 2019, you went to eight decisions in a row, whether you won or lost, and since then, you've finished six of your seven fights, which is, uh, I, I suppose, a, a, a huge change, like almost split down the middle between fights. Now, is is that is that something that you try to do? To, and it, like, it's very easy for me to sit here and go, "Oh, I, tr I try to finish fights." You know, it's not that easy. But it, it was it something in your head that you were saying, like, "This, I need to be more ruthless. I need to be more of a killer. I need to go in and finish fights." And it's worked out for you, or, or has it just worked that way? No, you're absolutely. It was definitely. Um, I feel like the decisions before was myself being held back, and it wasn't anybody else around me it was more doubts within myself and not feeling like thinking about all the great things that the other fighter could do and casting so much doubt on my own capabilities that I withheld and I wasn't able to go out there. And uh, I made a, a big change with myself uh, in two ways. One, my entire time is spent just with the arena coach Charles Martinez and Vince Salvador and the team here. And so that commitment there really put my mental game in the right place where it needed to do. And to be able to put all the skills to advance my abilities to be able to perform at the level I needed to, as well as all of us saying, like, give it everything. You want that belt? If I have to break my back, literally doing that, if I have to go to sleep in the cage, I have to take those risks. I have to have fun. I have to be willing to push it no matter and only think about what I'm capable of and less about what other people are. It's, it's very interesting because like you're at a place in your career there where obviously you know you'll always go down in history as I mentioned at the very start as the first woman to ever step into the octagon but like you know you obviously lost that fight and you didn't get to the UFC title and you know by the time you got to Bellator you were in your mid-30s and for a lot of people in that you know, in that position, it, you know, you could have had a few fun fights, retired, and, you know, that'd, that'd be that. But the fact that you have had this late surge in your career where you've gone, not only won a title, defended a title against the best people in the world in, in your division in Bellator, and now we're moving on to do it in PFL as well. That must be unbelievable to have that feeling. Like, I, I, was, I was looking for a comparison, maybe like a Michael Bisping, who was always kind of a contender and then won it at the end of his career, and it completely changed his whole career. Do you feel that way too? Do you feel like the last few have completely changed the whole outlook on your career yeah absolutely like i said um my departing from the ufc and going into a state of unrest not knowing what the future is going to hold for me being hopeful that the martial arts that i was the way that i had upheld myself my always being respectful to everybody that i ever worked with that, that would speak volumes for me and be able to carry over to a different organization wanting to impart in everybody that's not the way i want to go out as as being a decision winner i'm, I'm a finisher that's what i've always gone for so i wanted to go out and i really wanted to be able to show everyone uh but the reality is, is i'm a late bloomer i always have been i mean i started a month before my 26th birthday i joined the marine corps later every aspect of my life has been a late bloomer and mma just happened to be the same thing like i'm not sure who the oldest female world champion is but it must be too far away is that something you might have uh, I, i'm chris cyborg is not far away as well i suppose either but is that something you would like to do and keep going how many more years do you think you, you have in you fighting at the top level 
I guess the season will show out. We'll see at the end of the season uh, what it holds. I'm feeling healthy. You know, I've done a lot of things to put more concentration on recovery and training smarter. You know, the days of just standing and brawling and fighting in the cage and training instead of in when I actually get to the fighter over, I try and do everything much smarter and think towards long term, not just my performance within the cage, but also my health and my ability to, to spend time with my family. And I think those steps have really helped mitigate any injuries that could have withheld my ability to be able to perform. And I think that that's keeping me healthy and keeping me in it later than most people. How, how important that is that? Because I've been talking to a lot of people uh, recently. I talked to Fabian Edwards, who's uh, obviously f- fighting in Bellator and PFL now as well, the same as yourself. And he told me he's kind of stopped doing pre-camps and just getting into camps because of injuries. And, you know, it's it's better to almost come in fresh. Is that a big thing you found in your career as well? To Like almost avoiding injuries and being fresh is more important than anything else, especially, I suppose, at this stage of your, your career where you have all the information and, and all the techniques in your head. Yeah, it's really just about staying healthy. Um, I don't like to do the take time off and then come back and get in shape for fight camp. I think that that that's how you get injuries. Um, my whole thing is as long as I'm healthy after the fight, you'll see me at 6 a.m. the day after the fight on an elliptical on a treadmill working out. And that's what I, that's been my my fight routine is just to show that as long as I don't have an injury, I want to stay healthy. I'm not about working and getting all the way to the top of the mountain of getting in the best shape I can to then roll back down and then do it all over again. I'd rather stay at the top and just coast. And for me within camp, it's just about training with the right partners, being smart, sticking to game plans and not going out there and fighting at training, leave it for the gauge. Is it is it hard to get training partners? Obviously, because if someone is going to be fighting towards the very top level, you'll be on the radar at that weight class. And we obviously we saw it with Elimina last time out that you've trained together before. Is it tough to actually get training partners and to, you know, especially at that level to help you get prepared for these big fights? Uh, yes and no. So to get the training partners, absolutely not. To get the training partners that can maintain my schedule, it's a little bit difficult. I, I feel like even at this stage, I, I may be 40 and I still train six to seven hours a day. And that's more than what the 21 year olds, the 20, 18 year olds are doing themselves. So to find other partners are willing to do that, especially when you build a good rapport with somebody and you're like, Hey, can you come in tomorrow and do another four hours? I mean, they're like, no, I need a break. Like I'm done. That was all I had. Like I gave you everything. Yeah. So that's the hardest part is finding because people want to go on vacations. They want to go do all these other things. I'm like, this, this is my life. These are my vacations. This is my happy place. This is my mental stability, my sanctuary. Everything is devoted into this. So I don't need to go take a vacation when I'm enjoying what I do here. 100%. Liz, I appreciate the time. Uh, a couple of more questions before I let you go. There's one person I have to ask you about. It's uh, Dakota Decheva. And obviously, from my part of the world, she's just across the water here in the UK. A lot of people think, you know, she is the next world champion. She is the next, next big star in uh, not just in your weight class, but in women's MMA, but maybe in all of, of MMA. I don't know how much you've seen of her so far. Uh, first of all, have you seen much of her? And if you have, what, what do you think of her as a fighter? Yeah, you know, I definitely watched tape on her when I was um, hearing about rumors that potentially Bellator is going to PFL. That was the first thing I did is what does the prospects of the 125 division in PFL look like in comparison to Bellator? And I saw Dakota winning the belt in, in the UK and props to her for that. Um, I think that, yeah, she has a great future and a bright future. Do I think that it's one that's going to be brighter than mine? No, I I don't think that she has all the skills necessary yet. I think that she still has a lot of growth to be had. You know, one area she hasn't been tested is somebody that can actually move around the cage and not go in a back and forth fashion with her and somebody that's going to test her on the ground. She hasn't been tested with anybody that actually has a skill set on the ground to challenge her. And there are plenty of females that are coming over in this season. that are definitely going to be difficult for her, including myself. Is that a fight you'd like next after the the Juliana Velasquez fight? Obviously, if if you get through that one. Yeah, if not, you know, I think the finals would be was super exciting for everybody, right? The the idea that you have the UK champion going against the former Bellator champion in the finals to really determine who's the best. That to me probably seems like the most exciting one. One hundred percent. I think that'd be very fun. And the last question I want to ask you are. I've wanted to ask you this question for years because my I, I do a, a podcast here in Ireland with my colleague Graham and he every time you come up or Rhonda comes up or that fight comes up, he says Rhonda won it by biting her way to the title. Right. <laughs> how how bad was that bite? Should she have been disqualified? Should you have won the belt? Tell me about that bite. How bad was it? Can you describe it? <laughs> So now after having done that move to so many people and mastering it so that I never make that mistake, like that's one of my things is I come back and then I'm like, I won't make that mistake. Let's fix this. Right. 
um, I now realize that no, she didn't. She didn't bite me. I went over her mouth, and she had no choice. And I just crushed her teeth into my arm. So it wasn't as much as like she was just stuck in that position. And uh, talking to some of the people that that she used to train with, be coached by, her jaw still hurts to this day. So we both we both left a mark on each other. Um, you know, that night I was certainly hoping that I was going to get it. She didn't bite me. It was more me crushing her teeth into my arm. And I definitely felt it that's for that, days after. That, that's almost a cooler story. I take that. I like that. Uh, Liz, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck in your fight next week. Thank you so much.